Jesus. Luke chapter number 11. We're going to start reading in verse number 39. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and, of, and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold all things that are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and of all manner of herbs, and pass over the judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men which walk over them are not aware of them. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, we're just thankful, as I mentioned earlier, Lord, just to be in your house tonight, Lord. We're thankful to have this uh, oasis to come to in the middle of the week, Lord. Thankful just to come and get around uh, fellow saints of God, Lord, to just help uplift us throughout this week. Uh, Lord, that we know how the world can beat us down and Lord we're just thankful for this opportunity we have Lord we ask you just be with what you've laid upon my heart Lord help me convey it to your people here the way you gave it to me that it can be a help and encouragement to each and every one of us here tonight Lord if there be anybody that's lost uh, Lord help them see through this Lord their need for salvation before it's too late Lord just help each and every one of us walk out of here tonight closer to you than we was when we came in as you just meet with us and help us in Jesus name we pray Amen. Uh, the first thing I want to look at by way of introduction is we just see uh, the wondering, so to speak, in verse number 39. It says, The Lord said unto them, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, uh, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. You know, it goes right along with that uh, song a little bit that Sister Kenzie sang. What do they see on the outside? But more importantly, what is on the inside? Uh, you know, a lot of times they can see uh, Jesus in our clothing, but what appearance truly do we give off uh, when others see us? How much of that inside comes out uh, that shows we are saved? Uh, I, I believe with all my heart we can dress up and look the part, so to speak. But people, we, when you look at people's faces, you can tell what is on their face. Uh, you can look at somebody and tell Brother Donald when they walk in almost sometimes what kind of day they've had. You know, from the time they walk in, you can see their face. Well, they look down. They look depressed. They look excited excited to be here, so to speak. And so we see Jesus asking them, the wondering, uh, do you make clean the outside, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Uh, that's going to show eventually over time uh, what our inside is. So we see the wondering and we see what I talked about a little bit then, what I just mentioned a little bit. Uh, the within and without in verse number 40. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? Uh, we, we too many times want to try to clean up the outside without worrying about the inside. Uh, we always want to put on a good appearance, uh, but our inside is far from where God wants us to be. Uh, the third thing, and, and this is, you know, this is just strictly, uh, you know, God gave me this, I actually, you know, added this today looking at verses 42 through 44 and and I won't read them all again this time we might hear in just a second and but I just seen this and I read this and got to thinking about this week and just thought wow we see so much that goes on today talking about that Jesus is love and Jesus is love and that's what we're going to talk about in just a little bit but we seem to think that Jesus is just accepting of everything um, I don't know how many of you watched the Super Bowl or heard anything about the Super Bowl and I didn't see this ad, Brother Ron. I, I didn't see the commercial. Um, I've seen clips of it or whatever. And I guess last year, I think there was the one uh, that ran back then also about this whole, he gets us. I guess this whole commercial, and I guess this one this year was everybody uh, washing other people's feet, Brother Ray. And evidently they had people from different walks of life uh, washing people's feet. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of people think, oh, we don't need to have a problem with that. Well, I do have a problem with that. Uh, number one, we won't get political, but it only went one way. You know, it didn't go both ways, Brother Donald. You didn't see it going both ways. And number two, nowhere does Jesus accepting of sin. Jesus didn't go out and accept anybody and wash their feet. He washed the disciples' feet. 
Did he not? He washed the feet of the people that came that were following him and those that came in to show them who he was and about being a servant. You know, it's not about washing people's feet and showing people love and being accepting of their sin. That's, that's what the world seems to want us to get to. Just We'll just accept their sin, then everything will be okay. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. I am to love them. I am to try to get them the gospel so that they will get saved and spend eternity in heaven, but I'm not to accept their sin. You know, that is why we end up in the shape that we are today. You know, I, 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 even though I'm not as old as maybe some, I do still remember in my lifetime at some point, it was just, if you'll just let them do what they want to do, Brother Tommy, just leave them alone and, and just let them live the lifestyle they want to live and everything will be okay, and here we are today. You know, we got people that can't decide what difference between a man and a woman. We got people who can't decide. They, they think eight-year-old boys can decide if they're an eight-year-old girl. And it's just foolishness that goes on. But we still hear so many people want to just say, no, Jesus wasn't about all that. Jesus was about holiness and righteousness. He wasn't about being accepting of sin. And that's what he talks to the Pharisees right here in verses 42 through 44. We see three different occasions. He says, woe unto you Pharisees. Woe unto you Pharisees. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. We see the woe that he's telling them. He goes through and past goes through all these things about some of the things that they wanted to do. Tithe and, and, and their, pray their tithe on mints and rue and the manner of earth and pass over it and all this stuff and you see in verse 43 woe unto you Pharisees for you love the uppermost seats they love the best and then he talks about the ending in verse number 44 for years graves which appear not and the men that walk over them are not aware of them we see he says woe unto them for the way that they are the way that they act the way their outward appearance puts on but deep down on the inside we know they aren't right but what I want to look at, I wasn't, we're not going to uh, beat you down or anything tonight. You know, this was all about, if you're a fella here tonight and you didn't get flowers, you're probably already in enough trouble, so I'm not going to yell at you or anything like that. Verse number 40. Two, he says, But woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue of all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. And what I want to preach on with God's help tonight is this thought. Don't overlook the love of God. We have so many things to be thankful for, and rightfully so, but, and, and so many times I'm afraid that there are certain things that we just take for granted, certain things that we just overlook, so to speak, that we don't give enough time and thought into it. And today, being Valentine's Day, that's what I want us to look at and focus on. Don't overlook the love of God. Can I say, first off, the love of God is unalienable. In Romans chapter number 8, and verses 35 through 39, the Bible says, "...who shall separate us from the love of Christ?" Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can I say his love is unalienable? You can't, we can't get away from it. Nothing is going to separate us from it. It doesn't matter what may happen in this world, how bad things may get, we know that God still loves us. And he still loves each and every one, and he wants them to come to him and get saved. There's no doubt about that. His love is unalienable. You know, we think so many times, and, and, you know, Brother Bob, I've heard Brother Bob mention this before and talk about when, uh, uh, I don't remember who made the comment something about, I'm just thankful that God loved me when I was unlovable. And to think about the fact that Brother Bob said, well, in God's eyes, we were never unlovable. We were never that. In our eyes, we might be. In our eyes, we might even be that way as, uh, as born-again believers, we might think we're unlovable. But in God's eyes, we were never that way because nothing can separate us from the love of God. No matter what we have going on in our life, He still loves us. No matter how far we have strayed from Him, maybe even on a daily basis, He still loves us. He's always right there, and He still loves us. Can I say not only is it un unalienable, can I say second of all, it is unfailing. You, it is amazing to me, there's nothing, no point in your life you can look back and say that God's love failed you. In Isaiah chapter number 49 and verses 15 and 16, it says, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? 
Yea, they may forget, yet will I, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. He's never forgotten us. His love's never failed us. You know, as I alluded to just a, a little bit ago, and I was talking to Brother Phil even beforehand, talking about, uh, uh, you know, what writing my devotion on Friday and talking about how God will provide the answers. He'll do that because he loves us. If we're just willing to rely on him and trust in him and seek his face, he loves us enough that he will give us the answers. Sometimes it might not be the answer we're looking for, so to speak, fellas, but he will give us the answer. Why? Because his love is unfailing. It has never failed us. There's not a time in our life that we can't go back, no matter how bad the storm might have been at the time. You might think that there was a storm you was going through that you just, you had no idea how you was going to get through it. But when you look back on that fact, God was always there. He always loved us. He was always there. He always made a way out. We just had to rely on him. His love is unfailing. Can I say thirdly, his love is unearned this is the one that it, it amazes me some of the things that you see in life and and this is something i'll mention here in just a little bit in first john chapter 4 and verse 19 we all know this first we love him because he first loved us um i believe you've heard me probably talk about this before at work i like to listen to a lot of podcasts brother ed and one of them i'll listen to usually just because it'll do with some local things, and sometimes it can be pretty good. There's a local radio station uh, uh, that, that puts out just like a 30-minute podcast of their show or whatever, and, and I'll listen to part of it throughout the day. And, and today they had one of the, uh, the DJs on. He, he called his wife, and they was, uh, he told her, he said they had made plans tonight, uh, Brother Moore, and they had made plans they was going to have a roast. And he said his mom had just recently passed away, and he said his mom was always the one that reminded him of this, of what today is. Well, I guess today's Ash Wednesday. And he said, on Ash Wednesday, Brother Ron, they can't eat meat. And she said, well, it's too late now. It's already in the, it's, you know, it's already in the crock pot. He goes, well, I guess we'll have to put it in the fridge, and we'll just have to have it tomorrow. And then he was talking about he had made plans for Friday and having a bunch of family over, and they was going to have grill-out steaks and all this stuff, and now they can't do that because they got to have fish. Now, what a shame that so many people out there think that they have to do something to earn the love of God. I have to, I have to go through these next however many weeks it is, and, and I can't eat meat on Fridays, and I have to give this up, and I have to give that up, and do all these things to try to earn the love of God. You know, I, I've never understood that. I used to work with some people who believed you could lose your salvation, and, but I, I never, they never could explain to me what loses it. Is it... You know, if I horn cuss somebody, does that make me lose my salvation? Do I have to do something in the Bible that the law talked about? And can I not get saved until I go to church again? Like, I don't understand how it works. What a shame all these people think you have to do something to earn the love. It's unearned. You can't earn it. He just loves us because he's just God. Because that's just how good of a God he is. He just always loves us. And sometimes we tend to forget that. And we want to try to do things, well, I, I know I did this bad and that bad, but if I'll just, you know, even, even us sometimes can fall into that trap. If I just try to be better, no, we, being better ain't going to make him love us any more or any less, anything like that. He loves us the same, you know, and it, we'll, we'll talk about that one here in just a second. His love is unearned. I'm thankful that, that I grew up in, in, at least in a home that wasn't, you know, one of the fellows today he talked about, he said that he thought that 90% of the area was probably Catholic. What a shame. What a shame. If that's the case, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. But what, what if it's not? What if it's 70% of the area is Catholic? That's a shame that they think they have to do something to earn the love of God. But it also shows how much work as a church we have to do to try to get out and reach them. Because God hasn't given up on them. How do I know that? Because we're still here tonight. If God had given up on them, we wouldn't be here. We'd already be in heaven, you know? So God hasn't given up on them. So how much more work do we have to do to show them all that that you're doing is worthless? It's, you're not going to earn his love. You're not going to earn your salvation. You're not going to earn your spot in heaven or anything like that. You know, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'm, I don't know why I'm on all this. I don't want to pick on anybody, but I'm just telling facts, Brother Ray. Bella had a game that she cheered at um, on Monday night. Now, I'm not going to say the two schools, that, uh, the, the team that she cheered for, but it was amazing to me the difference 
in the schools how one school you knew who they was brother ron and you just knew it, it was a, a local christian school and you just knew where those people come from just the way they just walked in with their nose up in the air like they was just better than everybody and i watched some of these fellas and these ladies walk in and i'm like you're no better than anybody here you know, you might look at this as the one of the poor schools in town or whatever, and you're from, you know, your, your part of town. You might think you have something, but you ain't got nothing. You know, you have nothing. But that's how they walk. Like, they, you could see the ones that walk in and just their nose up in the air like they have it better than everybody. That's not the case at all. And they think that they've earned something because they have a little bit of money or they go to a, a big church that might have this or that or whatever. His love is unearned. Can I say fourthly, his love is unquenchable. In Song of Solomon, chapter number 8, and verses 6 and 7, it says, Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath the most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. There's nothing that can quench God's love for us. Amen. Doesn't matter. We've already talked about it a little bit. Doesn't matter what we do. Doesn't matter how far we may fall. Doesn't matter what kind of sin we may do. Nothing can quench the love that God has for us. That should excite us. That should let us know that, that nothing is going to take that away. You know, I, I joked about earlier, you might be here and, and, you know, maybe you didn't get your wife flowers or your girlfriend flowers or anything like that. And you, they might get mad at you, Brother Ray. And, and, you know, maybe they typically win their phone conversation. All right, bye, I love you. And today you just got bye, click. I'm glad God ain't that way. I'm glad God's love isn't conditional. I can't quench his love even when I disappoint him, Brother Donald. Even if I don't do the things that, I, that, I'm, that I'm supposed to do that there's nothing that can quench his love. There's nothing that he looks at me at any point in time and thinks, yep, you screwed up today. You know, maybe you do better tomorrow and I'll love you tomorrow. But today, yeah, I don't like you very much. You know, that, 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 that can happen a lot of times here on this world. That can happen in a marriage. That can happen in a relationship. So you boys better take notes. Make sure you don't forget these kinds of days, okay? Don't, don't overlook these days. No matter, even if they tell you they don't want flowers in a card, get them flowers in a card. You'll be in less trouble that way. Uh, trust me, hey, if you know, you know, they, they make great apps. I know you don't know anything about them, Brother Ron. They make great apps right now. You can send cards and you can send all kinds of stuff. And my wife tells me, she'll tell you, she tells me, Brother Clint, we don't need cards, they're too expensive. I've still got her card every time. I even wrote in this one, maybe this time this will be the last one. Probably won't be, Brother Ron, because I don't want to get in trouble the next time, you know? But, but there's nothing that we can do that quenches God's love for us. We're thankful for God's love. Not only is it unquenchable, is it un unearned, it's unfailing, it's unalienable, it's also unchangeable. In John chapter 13 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of his world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Amen. Now there is a lot of times I have a... I'm like our pastor says, I have a very vivid imagination sometimes, and I just sometimes at work can just sit and think about things and ponder on things. And to me, Brother Josh, this is one of those things that just completely blows my mind, I guess you would say, so to speak. Think about the fact that Jesus knew how they were going to sell him out. He knew everything that was going to happen. He knew even all of us that would fail him. All of, all of the people that are here today, uh, not here but just in this world, that will, will deny him and, and fail to put their faith and trust in him. He knew all those things, and yet he still loved us, and he still went to the cross for us. Amen. Amen. That love that is unchangeable. Doesn't matter how much we disappoint him, he still loves us. It goes back to what I talked about, Brother Bob. There was never a time in our lives to him that we were unlovable, unlovable. His love's unchangeable. It doesn't matter what we do. He always loves us. You know, and it, that just, we, we think about the facts I, as I just talked about. We can make our spouse mad. We can make our kids mad. We can make our parents mad. And, and they can be uh, just so upset at us and not want to talk to us and all those things. But that's not God. And there's a whole lot more things I would do to disappoint him than it would be people here on this earth but his love 
is unchangeable. It never changed us. It, it, it never changed before, and it's not going to change after. It's not going to change now. And the fact that when you read this and talks about having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Knowing, think about the fact of, of all that time. You know, even talked about it a little bit at last night in the Bible Institute, talking about all the disciples and the fact that he walked with Judas every day, knowing Judas was going to sell him out knowing how Judas was, gonna, was going to do. Know that the fact that, it, as he talked about last night, teaching John that John was the only one at the cross, Brother Ed, knowing that all those were just going to run, were just going to be scared, even Peter, you know, denying him three times. All these things are going to happen, yet he still loved them to the end, was still willing to go to the cross, still willing to do all those things that, that to, to us just can't wrap our head around, so to speak. Can I say not only is it unchangeable, but his love is also undeniable. In John chapter 3 and verse number 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't care what anybody says, you cannot deny the love of God, the fact that he would send his son and the love of Christ, the fact that he would come and lay down his life for us knowing what we was going to do that I just talked about. Nobody can try to tell me, oh, God don't love us, or if God really loved us, he wouldn't send us to hell, or if God really, well, you send yourself to hell. Uh, but God, if he was truly a God of love, he would do this, or he would do, no, that's an our thinking. God does love us, and you can't deny it by the fact that he sent his son to die on the cross so that we could all have everlasting life. His love is undeniable. We can't even just look around this world and not know the fact and, and realize the fact that we cannot deny the love of God. I've seen a clip, and this is, I guess, from some uh, crazy uh, uh, TV show or something, and, but it was good. I guess this mom had said something about the fact, Brother Tommy, that she didn't believe in God anymore. And her son asked her, said, so you don't believe in God anymore? He goes, did you ever think about the fact that if there was just a little more gravity, you know, how it would just, just destroy us? And if there was a little bit less, we would just whew, float off in forever. Do you not think that he knows all those things about us? Do you not think that he knows exactly what we need? He knows exactly when we need those things. He knows exactly when we need to, uh, whatever it may be. God always has a plan. He has everything in order right where it needs to be. Why? Because he loves us. And we cannot deny that love that he has for us. If we look back in our life and think about the things that came into our life at, at, at certain times, whatever it may be, and realize, uh, as Sister Brittany sings that song, he, he was never four days late. He was always right on time with everything he's done for us. He's always, it might not have been in our timing, because that's our problem, we focused on our timing. But he was always right on time with his timing. You know, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to me sometimes how we, we can pray and pray and pray and seek his face and certain things, and God will give us the answers, and he'll answer those things in his timing. Why? Because he loves us. And we can't deny the love that he has for us. And let me say this lastly. I know, I'm almost done. Keep in mind, I started early. Yeah, it was funny. I seen uh, uh, some people coming in. I was like, uh, I said, look, I said, some of them had family members and invited some visitors and things like that coming in. They told them, said, Brother Josh, be preaching tonight. We're short, y'all. I come go to church with us. Miss Lisa shaking her head. <clears throat> Just saying. Can I say this lastly? His love is unmatched. In Ephesians chapter number 3 and verses 17 through 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints that it, what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth, passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. His love is unmatched. Don't overlook the fact that his love, there's nothing that we can compare in this world to God's love for us. Amen. Nothing. There, there, there's just nothing. You know, no matter how much our spouse loves us, no matter how much we love our kids, no matter how much you might love your grandkids, your great-grandkids, there, there's nothing that can come close to matching God's love that he has for us. Why? Because of everything that we've just talked about. The fact that no matter where we're at, what we do, how we let him down, he still loves us. No matter how far we may get from him, he still loves us and always willing to welcome us back. It's just, it's an unmatched love. You know, it, 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 it makes me, 
I guess it's hard sometimes for us to understand because we're saved, we're, we're in God's love, and we have those things, but it just it, you look at people and think, how do you not get this? How do you not understand that the, the God of heaven, the God of all creation loves you and wants something better for you, and yet you don't want him? Like, it's hard for us to understand, but that's why it's come so much of why, as Sister Kenzie sang that song, we need to show them that. You know, I'm not trying to be mean, but and I understand this this world is a terrible place sometimes, it, especially right now. It's it can get you beat down. It can get you. You can just get so frustrated and aggravated. You're just like, Lord, please come quickly. Just almost begging him to come because you're tired of it. But it does us no good if we claim that we're Christian. We claim that God loves us. We claim that we have all these attributes of his love and there's nothing that can beat it. And we walk around like this all the time are we showing the love of christ are we showing others that love that he has for us and so that they can see like he's got something different he you have something different than what i have you have something i need to know what that is how many times do we have anybody ask us you know we hear the question all the time when was somebody asked you the last time they asked you if you was a christian or they could tell you was a christian so to speak when was the last time somebody just looked at us and just noticed something different about us why should they notice that? Because we have the love of God. Because all these things that we talked about too many times, I'm afraid we overlook these things. We, don't, we, we forget the fact of how much God loves us on a day-to-day -day basis. We forget the fact of how you can't match his love. You can't deny his love. We forget about the fact that what do I have to be sad about? God loves me. The, the, the one who created everything, the one that keeps everything in orbit, the one that knows exactly who's in the White House, the one that knows exactly everything that's going on, the one that knows who's going to be in the White House next January if we're still here, the one who knows all these things loves me. Each and every one of us. He loves us. So what do we have to be down or depressed about? Because he loves us. Don't overlook that love of God. Especially on a day like today that's supposed to be all about love. How often today did we think about the love of God? How often today, not only do we think about how much he loves us, but how much do we think about showing others how much he loves them? How much today did we truly think about and focus on, you know what, I love my spouse, I love my kids, I love my girlfriend, my boyfriend, whatever it may be, but I'm so thankful that the love of God dwells inside of me. I'm so thankful that the God that created everything loves me, little old me. The, thank, the thankful for the fact that there's nothing I can do to get away from that love of God. Don't overlook the love of God today. Be thankful for the love of God today. Brother Daniel, you and Brother Clint come get a song of invitation. Maybe you just want to come and thank him for his love. Maybe you have somebody else around here, just a friend or anything. You just want to thankful uh, for their friendship, for the fact that they might have loved you on your worst day and just maybe was willing, did something to pick you up or help you, whatever it may be. As they're picking out a song, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, and for your love. Lord, we're so thankful for everything you've done for us, for everything you show us, how much you love us, Lord, on a day-to-day -day basis. As you just speak to hearts now during this invitation, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.